radioactive elements can spontaneously emit three different types of radiation, alpha particles, beta particles, and gamma rays. Click on one of the buttons to see animations of different types of radioactive decay. Okay, so we have three different elements here, three different isotopes here. We have carbon-14, cobalt-60, and radon-222. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on each one of those and kind of show what happens to these as they, as they decay. If you look at carbon, carbon is 14 to 6. It's a small element, so the most stable configuration for small elements should be a should be a 12-6. So it should be six protons to six neutrons. So carbon, in this case, has too many neutrons. So it has to undergo a decay in which it's going to somehow reduce that neutron ratio. So here's carbon. Carbon-14 spontaneously emits beta particles from its nuclei. Since beta particles are attracted to the positive plate of an applied electric field, they must be negatively charged. In fact, beta particles are electrons that are formed and then emitted from the nuclei of certain radioactive isotopes. In the decay process, a neutron is converted to a proton and a beta particle. A carbon-14 nucleus contains six protons and eight neutrons. During beta decay, one of the neutrons is converted to a proton and an electron. This electron, called a beta particle, is then ejected from the nucleus, producing nitrogen-14. A nitrogen-14 nucleus is stable. Thus, no further radioactive decay occurs. Okay, so we noticed that we had carbon-14, and because we switched one proton, or sorry, one neutron into a proton, we now have one additional proton, and so we changed our actual element. So we went from being carbon to being nitrogen because we now have seven protons. Our neutrons have stayed the same, in terms of what we have overall, and we actually kicked out one of these, these particles called a beta particle, okay? Or basically, it's an electron being kicked out. So when you convert across, you actually get this ejection of an electron here for beta decay. Let's go to cobalt now and see what's going on there. Cobalt-60 is used for radiation therapy in treating certain cancers. It spontaneously emits gamma rays from its nuclei. Since gamma rays are undeflected by an applied electrical field, they have no electrical charge. Gamma rays are very high-energy electromagnetic radiation. They have no detectable charge or mass. A cobalt-60 nucleus contains 27 protons and 33 neutrons. When a gamma ray is emitted, the number of protons and neutrons in the nucleus is unchanged. The half-life for this process is 5.26 years. This means that half of a given sample will undergo this process every 5.26 years. Okay. In gamma radiation, we don't get a change in the ratio with the gamma radiation. Uh, all we get is a massive release of gamma energy, which in itself can be devastating to cancer cells and also to our normal cells in terms of our radiation. Now, typically, gamma radiation is accompanied by another type of decay. So we normally don't see it by itself. We see it as an additional piece to some other types of decay. So we'll usually get maybe beta decay with gamma or alpha decay with gamma, but gamma is part of the process. Okay? Let's go to radon-222. Radon-222 is being formed continuously in our environment by decay of uranium-238. Radon, being a noble gas, is chemically unreactive. Therefore, it is not trapped by chemical processes in the soil or water and is free to seep up from the ground and into homes. Radon spontaneously emits alpha particles from its nuclei. Since alpha particles are attracted to the negative plate of an applied electrical field, they must be positively charged. A radon-222 nucleus contains 86 protons and 136 neutrons. During alpha particle emission, a particle composed of two protons and two neutrons is emitted. An alpha particle is equivalent to a helium-4 nucleus. When an alpha particle is emitted from a radon-222 nucleus, a polonium isotope, polonium-218, is produced. Since an alpha particle contains two protons, the atomic number decreases by two from 86 to 84. An alpha particle has a mass number of 4, so the mass number decreases from 222 to 218. 
The polonium-218 isotope produced is unstable and therefore undergoes further radioactive decay. Okay, so the end of this video, they talk about how this alpha decay happens and it makes something that is also unstable. So then this nucleus would then decay again and again and again. And we get a series or a chain of different decays that happen over time. Okay, so this is your alpha decay. Now, if we go back to our uh, slideshow, we see that we're going to go through the three types of radiation, and then in class, we're going to reinforce that with some examples, and we're going to do some uh, practice with actually calculating what changes when you do these different types of radiation. Okay, so alpha radiation, emission of a helium nuclei from a larger nucleus of unstable radioisotope. Okay, so basically, alpha radiation is emitting a helium, not the whole atom, not the electrons, just a helium nuclei. Now, it's not actually helium, but it's the exact same components of a helium nucleus, okay? We do this when there's too many protons, okay? And we'll talk more about that in class. Um, the alpha particles have a really high mass. They're very big in terms of nuclear decay. Um, you have a mass number of four here being emitted. Uh, as a result, they don't travel very fast. They don't travel very far. So we have a low penetration. Now, what we mean by that is that we can shield them very easily uh, using simple things, okay? Uh, in terms of alpha radiation, uh, alpha radiation is very common um, and really is only dangerous to us if we ingest the, the alpha radiating particles and those particles actually get within our systems. Um, otherwise, a piece of paper is enough to shield alpha radiation. Your clothes, your skin itself actually shields it for us. So we really don't worry about alpha radiation unless we're purposefully or accidentally ingesting things that do alpha radiation. Okay. Now the way we symbolize that is we either actually use helium with the 4-2 designation, meaning a mass number of 4 and 2 protons, or we actually use the Greek letter alpha in our symbols. Okay, So two examples we see of that happening, if you had uranium-238, one of the decays uranium-238 undergoes is alpha radiation. So what happens is it emits this alpha particle. As a result, it has two less protons, so it actually becomes thorium, and it has four less overall mass number, so it's, it's thorium-234. Down here we see plutonium-240 undergoing the same process where it emits an alpha particle and it makes uranium-236, okay? So there's lots of different elements that do alpha radiation. Beta decay, which is the first one that we saw in the video, is when we take and we decompose a neutron into a proton. Now that sounds kind of weird that we actually can turn a proton into a neutron, but it is actually possible because protons and neutrons are made up of smaller particles called quarks. So it's a rearrangement of those quarks. Now when that happens, it happens because we have too many neutrons. So it's a way to shift that ratio to better balance our protons and neutrons. Okay? The mass of a beta particle is negligible because basically it's an electron. Okay? They are moving at high speeds, and they have what we call medium penetration, which means there is some concern if it exposure to us in terms of external exposure, but we can do simple things to shield us from beta decay if we need to. Okay? Um, for example, just using aluminum, aluminum foil or thin wood bracing is all we really need to basically stop that particle from penetrating through that and into us or other things that we don't want um, to be irradiated. Okay? So the way we symbolize that is basically we're emitting an electron. So there's no mass to it. It's an electron. We give it a negative one value here because essentially it's subtracting away a proton from the system. Okay? Otherwise, you see it as a beta symbol here. So, for example, you take a neutron, you can turn it into basically a hydrogen atom, and it's going to emit an electron and doing that process. So here we have carbon-14. It's undergoing beta decay into nitrogen-14. Okay? So we're converting from six protons to seven protons. We're taking that neutron, turning it into a proton. But because we're just switching places, the overall mass does not change. So we still have the same mass number, but now we have more protons. So if you notice our ratio, we went from a 14 to 6 ratio to a 14 to 7. So this is a preferred ratio between protons and neutrons for small elements. As a result, we kick out an electron. Here's another example of that. Uh, radon-228 turning into actinium-228 with 89 as its mass number, or sorry, its atomic number, and emitting that beta particle. Now, one thing we're going to kind of ignore in this unit because we don't have time to talk about it are neutrinos. In most nuclear decays, neutrinos are another small 
subatomic particle that gets emitted or absorbed as part of the process. So if you do research online and talk about it, you'll see sometimes things discuss it with neutrinos, positive neutrinos, negative neut neutrinos. We're going to kind of ignore them because they're just another side component to these changes that we're seeing in these different types of decay. Now our third and final radiation is gamma radiation. This is the dangerous stuff, okay? So high energy electromagnetic radiation, okay? If you look at our electromagnetic spectrum, it's the far end of that um, spectrum, the highest energy waves that we have. Um, typically, it does accompany other decays. Because it is just energy, there's no mass to it, okay? As a result, we're basically moving light energy. It can travel great distances and extremely high penetration. In reality, it's really hard for us to stop it completely, okay? It's very dangerous to us. Um, we can partially shield it or diminish its energy um, by using several meters of concrete and or several inches of lead. So when we talk about nuclear reactors, we're actually going to see kind of how they construct them and how, how, many, how many different layers of thick lead and concrete they use to actually try to capture all this gamma radiation, okay? We use a Greek symbol gamma for that. And if we see what happens here, Notice how we're seeing thorium turning into radon. And here's your gamma radiation, but we also see a beta decay, or sorry, an alpha decay here too, because it's very common that with gamma radiation, you also get either alpha or beta decay going along with it. So we see both alpha and gamma in this example. And then down here, same idea, where we went from plutonium to another plutonium, and they're just showing just the gamma radiation being let off here, okay? Now, take a quick comparison of the three in terms of what we have. We have alpha, beta, gamma. Okay? Paper can stop the alpha. Aluminum foil can stop the beta. And even thick blocks of lead or concrete isn't going to get rid of all the gamma radiation. So that's our most dangerous one. Okay? We're going to end the video here. Tomorrow we're going to do some practice with actually writing up these equations and figuring out what happens when they undergo beta, gamma, and alpha decay. And we're also going to pull out uh, a Geiger counter and take a look at some radioactive stuff in class. Okay, guys, that is it. Thank you.